This picture's about an owl. That's me. And a fella named Fred Jones. No, that's not Fred. That's his house. Fred is inside sleeping. Now, I'm not just an ordinary owl. Oh, by the way, this picture's sort of different. Wait a minute. Not that different. That's better. Still better. Even better yet. Hey, here I am, up here. Well, as I was saying, I'm not just an ordinary owl. I'm a student of habit. Been sort of observing people's habits for years. Now, when I say habits, I mean all kinds of habits. Helpful habits, in-between habits, and not-so-helpful habits. Fact is, most people live by habit. You take Fred Jones. Fella lives in the house down there. Good, honest citizen. Head of a family. Just about everything Fred does is by habit. Even the way he sleeps. Now, some of his habits help him. Some of them don't. See what I mean? Let's have a look downstairs. Would you look at that? Breakfast table's even been set the night before. Hat on the chair, letters to be mailed. All there, right by the front door. And the umbrella, in case it rains. Mighty orderly, I'd say. Uh-oh, what's this? Somebody forgot to put away the vacuum. Oh, well. Say, Fred's supposed to be at work by 8.30. Shouldn't he be up by now? Day in, day out, the routine never varies. It isn't that Louise hasn't tried to have breakfast ready, but... Somehow, there just isn't time for much more than a fast cup of coffee. You know, Fred's got some good health habits. He always brushes his teeth after meals. Then he's on his way. Hold it. He forgot something. Uh, let's take a quick look at Fred's day up till now. time the alarm goes off, life at the Joneses is mostly a bunch of habits strung together. Another thing Fred has made a habit of is walking part way to work every day. In fact, his routine is so firmly established, he hasn't been late to work for 15 years. Of course, he hasn't eaten any breakfast for 15 years either. That's uh, become sort of a habit, too. Which is maybe why, along about 10.30, he feels sort of all in. Coffee break's a great thing for Fred. Not just because of the coffee, but because those nearby goodies somehow taste so scrumptious. When 12.30 rolls around, punctual Fred Jones always leads his pals to the regular eatery. Here Fred can add to the blue plate with his favorite beverage, a strawberry frosted. On the way out, he invariably lingers at the cashier's desk so he can uh, pick up a little something extra. Sort of a dessert snack. Maybe he'd better make it two, just in case the pangs of hunger overcome him during the afternoon. But let's take another look back. Even after Fred leaves for the office, it's habit, habit, habit. On the way back from lunch, Fred, as usual, indulges in his harmless little habit of admiring his reflection in the store windows. A mighty handsome figure of a man for a guy his age, especially if you overlook that little bulge at the waistline. Just now, Fred happens to remember that today's the day he goes to see his doctor. He finds it a helpful habit to see him regularly, and he always feels better for having done it. Every once in a while, Fred's good wife, Louise, prepares some special treat for dinner. But tonight, it's one of Fred's super-duper favorites. French fried onion rings. Despite the two helpings of meat and potatoes that he's already tucked away, Fred still manages to find room for those ever-loving onion rings. With notable consequences, including drowsiness.
Well, it's 11 p.m., and all the lights are out, right on schedule. Oh, um, just another routine day in the life of Fred Jones. Wait a minute. That's odd. Fred's not in the habit of going for midnight strolls. Something wrong, pal? Oh, nothing really, I guess. You went to your doctor today. What did he have to say? Well, he said there's nothing wrong with me. A change of eating habits wouldn't fix. Well, then what's bothering you? Well, I've eaten the same way for years. Uh-huh. You know, my system's used to a certain intake. It just couldn't stand any change. Is that what your doctor said? Well, not exactly. What he said was I don't need as much to eat as I used to. You know, I'm not as active a guy as I used to be. Well, then, what's your problem? Oh, you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. A habit's a habit. You can't change it. Oh, I've seen lots of people do it. Well, now, wait a minute. From my observations, I've noticed that most habits can be changed. Even eating habits. If. If what? If you know how. If you want to. And if you're willing to work at it. Uh, sounds impossible. But go on. The most important thing is you got to be sure you want to. I'm listening. Now, most people who succeed in changing their habits devote some time to thinking about it. it takes a little time to find out whether you really want to change a habit or not, because it's not going to be easy. Uh-huh. And a list is very helpful. A list? Sure. Many people make themselves a list. On one side, it's got what they like about the habit they're trying to change, and on the other side, the things they don't like about it. Well, this list, uh, what do they do with it? They carry it around with them. Keep looking at it and thinking about it until S-Day. S-Day? Sure, S-Day. Start day. That's the day you pick to start the habit change. Why a special day? Oh, that's important. People find it best to start their campaign when the time is ripe for it. Picking a start day gets you underway with more momentum. You know what I mean? Uh, seems to make sense. Certainly no harm in just thinking about it. Oh, hey, I'm not in the habit of staying up this late. I gotta be going. Well, see you later. So long, Fred. See you on this day. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe he will make up his mind, and then again, maybe he won't. Well, Fred did think about it, and he talked it over with Louise. Soon afterwards, he decided to make a little list of the things he liked about overeating. And the things he didn't like. After a few days of adding to the lists and thinking them over, he came to realize how much more important the don't likes were to him than the do likes. He thought about it so much, he even remembered where he'd hidden that diet plan his doctor had given him. And he tacked up a weighing schedule near the bathroom scales. The more he thought about it, the readier he became for S-Day. Monday the 8th, 7 a.m. Wait a minute. What's in Sam Hill is Fred up to? Better see if I can help. What's the trouble, Fred? Oh, I don't know. This isn't as easy as I thought. Oh, I meant to tell you about that, Fred. One thing at a time. Don't try to change your entire way of living all at once. I never saw anybody finish yet who started out that way. Relax, Fred. It's eating habits you're trying to change. Nothing else. Uh, maybe you're right. When coffee break time came at the office that day, Fred brought his coffee back to the desk. Even though he'd had breakfast, a uh, part of his new campaign, he was staying a safe distance from the goodies. But then, quite unexpectedly, the goodies came to him. Oh, it was a tough situation. And Fred was sort of looking around for help. No exceptions, Fred. No exceptions. That's probably the most important thing to remember about changing habits. You're just kidding yourself when you say, oh, just this once won't matter, because it does. Every time you resist, you're not only helping to defeat the old habit, 
You're forming a new one. What if I, uh, uh, make an occasional slip? Yeah. Well, all is not lost, but it prolongs the process, makes the whole thing a little tougher on you. After a week of lunches without strawberry frosteds, Fred really felt he was making progress. But he wondered what further steps he could take. Yep, coming along pretty good, Fred. Fact is, when most people get this far, they find they're ready for a little on-purpose self-testing. Self-testing? What do you mean by that? You know, Fred. Tempt yourself. Oh, I know it sounds silly, but it helps prepare you for future temptations. After Fred thought it over, he tried it out. As each day of his campaign goes by, Fred notices he's feeling better and looking better. Strangely, he finds it takes less food to satisfy him. Yes, sir. That new habit is working for him. And Louise has been a big help throughout Fred's campaign. He's come a long way. Uh-oh. Look who's arriving in a fancy car, totally unexpected. It's Louise's brother, Ernie, her Eaton brother. Just drove in from the big city, hungry as a bear. Well, Ernie's not going to put anybody out. No, sirree. The whole family's going out to dinner on him. And guess where he's going to take him? Gourmet's Grotto, where calorie is king. Now, a few months ago, Fred couldn't have passed up pâté de foie gras, the world's biggest Caesar salad, French fried onion rings, and French pastry. But tonight, he's almost enjoying himself on half the calories he used to want. Even with big-hearted Ernie picking up the check, he just doesn't seem to want the fanciest items on the menu. Tonight, Fred's have an orange sherbet for dessert and like him. Yep. Fred's on pretty solid ground now, and he can be proud of himself. But he's still got to stay on guard. He'll need to keep up the momentum that got him off to such a wonderful start on S-Day. For some time, still, he's going to keep on using that list in his wallet. He'll probably add some things to it, too. Even though he suspects it wouldn't do any harm, he won't allow a single exception to occur. He'll keep testing himself with small new temptations from time to time. And he'll enjoy the satisfaction of overcoming each one. And he'll concentrate on one habit change at a time. Until he's sure he's ready for another one. The other members of the family are impressed with the way Fred has carried this thing through. And they may have learned something that will be helpful to them personally. Like? Don't like. Like. You know what? I'm starting one of those lists myself. Yes, sirree.